When I just got out of high school, one of the first things that my parents did is they took me down to the local congregation where I was going to be attending college at, and they introduced me to the group and made sure that uh, the campus minister at the time got me to Devo every week and got me to Wednesday night services. And for the first maybe year or so, I religiously attended services. I went to every Devo, was involved as much as I could be, but as time went on, I got to where I started slacking off, and whenever my ride would call, I would say, oh, I'm just not feeling like going to church today, or oh, I'm too busy with school, or oh, I'm too busy with this or that. And, you know, I just kind of started realizing that as I stopped uh, attending services and slacked off a little bit, uh, my life was, uh, on the outside, it was looking okay, but, you know, I was having to deal with a lot of things, you know, school, and I was kind of drifting into the world. And then one day, uh, my campus minister calls and says, Hey, Rush, you coming to the meal you vote tonight? And I said, Well, sure, why not? And he pulls me aside and says, Listen, I know you haven't been attending services. And he asked me why, and I explained why. And uh, he said, Well, listen, I want you to try and attend uh, services. I want to encourage you to uh, attend more services. And I want you to know that we're all here for you. And we're all going to help you through whatever you need help with. And so from then on, uh, after that interaction, I felt more encouraged to attend services, and I just got closer to the group. And now I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. That's what we're going to be looking at, Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. And in Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 9, we find the parable of the sower. And we find that it says, A sower went out to sow, and as he scattered seed, some seed fell along uh, on the path and was trampled, and the birds came and ate up the seed. And then some seed fell along stony ground, and uh, they immediately sprang up and yielded a crop. Uh, but the sun came and scorched the seed, and the plants became withered and were scorched by the sun because they had no root in them. And then some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked the word because they had no roots to grow. And then some seed fell on good ground, and they yielded a crop, some 60, some 30, and some 100. Now Christ goes on to explain that the seed that fell on the path is the seed that allows the cares of the world and things of that nature to immediately come and snatch away the word. And Christ also explains that the seed that fell along the stony ground are people that immediately see, uh, hear the word and uh, have the gospel preached to them. And they immediately hear the word and, uh, you know, they begin to receive it with gladness, but the cares of the world and persecution arises. And they wither away, they fall away. And then the seed that falls among thorns, Christ tells us, again, the cares of the world and persecution come up and choke the word. But the seed that falls on good ground yields a crop. They receive the gospel and they yield a crop and they remain faithful. Now the way I want to approach this parable is this. I think that the environment that we as Christians come up in, whether it be a supportive family or a supportive congregation, or we have supportive Christian friends, can really determine what our future life is going to be as a Christian. Because when we're baptized, we know as Christians that we're going to experience persecution. And one of the things that the wise man Solomon points out in Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12, is that two are better than one. And when one falls down, his friend's going to help him back up. But pity the man who is alone and falls down, for he has no one to pull him back up. And also, two are better than one, because they're going to get a better return for their labor. They're going to be the ones that are going to go out and preach the gospel and um, bring more souls to Christ. But the main point that Solomon's making in these verses is that two are better than one, because they're going to have a friend that's going to, they're going to be able to come to, and they're going to be able to help, you know, that friend, whenever he experiences trials and tribulations and persecution. And the group that I'm targeting is people, young people, people that are in high school, or people that are getting ready to go off to college. Because one of the things that I found out really quick is that uh, the world can drag you down. 
But if you have a family, a strong, supportive family who goes to church all the time and is regular in their attendance, and you have friends that you know that you can turn to and help, uh, get help from, that's going to make your walk a little better as a Christian. Because you know they're not going to abandon you. And you know they're not going to forsake you. But we also know as Christians that Christ is not going to forsake us either. We can always turn to Him, but Christ encourages us as Christians to help others in our time of need. And this is a sermon that not only am I preaching to you guys, but I'm preaching to myself because I know that I need to better myself than being a more supportive Christian. And I think we all need to better ourselves as people who support others because maybe it's not always evident. Or maybe we're hearing announcements and we hear that so-and-so needs prayers or we see somebody come forward that needs prayers and we just think, oh, that's a job for somebody else. Or, oh, I'll get around to help them out eventually. And we let the cares of the world kind of choke us and move us away from helping that person. But trust me, they're needing help as much as you are. And if you give them that help and you support them, they're going to be uh, willing to support you because they know that they can come to you. And because you came to them and helped them, they need to come to you whenever you ask for help. And they need to be willing to help you. So I want to encourage not only you guys, but I'm making this encouragement to myself as well. That as we leave this camp, you know, we're preparing to be fellow preachers, but also we need to prepare to be good Christian friends. And we need to, whenever we guide others to Christ, we need to make sure that we're the kind of friend and we're the kind of brother in Christ that will help them to stay away from the other three types of soil that Christ discusses in this parable. We need to make sure that we help them to stay on the good soil so they will yield a crop. Because as it's been said many times, one of the most important things we can do is go into the world and preach the gospel. But after we preach the gospel and after we get them down into the water, we can't be short-sighted. we got to make sure that we're afraid of them and they can come to us for help. Because in the end, we're all brothers in Christ. And like the Verses that I mentioned in Ecclesiastes, a rope of three strands is not easily broken. And we need to make sure that we are bound together as Christians, as the song tells us, so that we're not broken. And so that we know we can turn to our brothers whenever we need help. So I want to encourage us all, including myself again, to as we leave this camp, be better Christian friends and support those who are truly in need. Because you never know how much of an impact that will make.